Many people think meekness is just somebody I'm just walking all over. I'm meek. I'm meek. I'm just going to let them walk all over me. Put your feet right here so I can have a footprint and I can show them. See how meek I am? No, no, no. Meek is I suffer the injury. And I'll do it, but I won't seek vengeance for it. When Jesus was on the cross, that was meekness. Because he said, Father, forgive them. For they know that what they do. Don't mean I just lay myself down and let you walk over me. But no, if you injure me, uh -huh. I got enough character to take the injury and not seek revenge. All right. Those who are seeking revenge got character problems. Uh -huh. yeah, they got character problems. Yes. Yep. Because we're trying to be, because see, some of us will talk, if you were taught like I was, I was raised on Church Street, I was raised right by, right around the corner from Mason Memorial, and you know that neighborhood bishop, and your mom, grandma told me now if they hit you, you got to hit them back and they do this, and if you don't, you got to deal with me, so I was scared of her more than I was scared of them. <laughs> and so here you are raised to retaliate, and you get into situations. And you're ready to revert back to your neighborhood time. Your growing up time. Oh, you gonna mess with me? I'm gonna show you who you're messing with. <laughs> but that's not meekness. Older man walked into the convenience store I was working in. I don't know why he wanted to talk to me, but he dropped this wisdom on me. He said, oh, son. He said, you're not a man. You know, you're not proving who you are as a man when you retaliate. So you really proving who you are as a man when you can walk away. That's good right there. I needed that because I was working that midnight shift and some people coming through and I need to walk away from some people. Uh-huh. And there's situations that sometimes, yes, you suffered an injury. Yes, they did you wrong. But suffering without seeking revenge. Suffering without plotting what you're going to do against them. Suffering without doing what we do in church. I'm going to pray uh -huh. that God of his me of all my enemies. Right. No. Suffering. Jesus didn't pray that God of his him of all his enemies. Yeah, David did, but Jesus didn't. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> know what dispensation you're in. You're not under the law, but under the grace. On the cross, Jesus didn't say, Father, get them. He said, Father, forgive them. Because they know not what they do. Can I propose to you, if you would give them the benefit of the doubt, that they don't know what they're doing? Yeah. You wouldn't hold a grudge and be offended? If you give them the benefit of the doubt, because that's what love does, it gives the benefit of the doubt until proven the other way. So if you don't speak to me in church, love says you just didn't see me. Until you prove something different. Then when you prove something different, I know how to respond. But love's gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Me is gives the benefit of the doubt. You didn't mean that. I'm not gonna seek revenge on you. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know who you're gonna mess with. You don't know my position in God. I'm going to just accept that you don't know really what you're doing. You're acting out of ignorance, and I'm not going to seek any revenge against you. That's character. It's no character to hit somebody who hits you. All right. My God. It, it's the, it takes character to say, okay, I'm not going to go there with you. It takes a whole lot of character and a whole lot of resolve. Uh huh. But Jesus said, that's meekness. That's meekness. And he wants me to show meekness in my character. Because sometimes, I remember the people trying to set us up. Trying to see how we're going to respond. And when we respond the right way, they go back to the ones who they had looking. I told you. I told you they hit the extra thing and all that. I told you, I told you. But when you respond in meekness and don't seek vengeance, it's like, wow, maybe they really do have something. Mm -hmm. And just as Pilate marveled at Jesus, they'll marvel at you. Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to figure out what kind of character you have. And they want that same kind of character. The last one is temperance. Temperance means self-control, moderation, and indulgence of the appetite and passion. Control yourself. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're about to close this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 9. Verse 9, verse, I mean chapter 9, I'm sorry, chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. As you get it, remember this, Paul is talking to the church. He's not talking to the world in this scripture, he's talking to the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, look what it says. Every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and break it into subjection, least by any means when I have preached to others. I myself should be a counselor. Let me read it in the Amplified, just in case the King James Version doesn't really give it to you the way you think it should. Look what the Amplified Bible says. It says, now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a reef that will soon wither. But we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessings that cannot will. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air or striking without an advert adversary. But like a boxer, I buckle up my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardship, and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not, not stand the test, be unapproved, and be rejected as a contender. In other words, this life as a Christian is like an athlete getting ready for whatever he is an athlete for, whether he's a boxer, or martial artists, or basketball, football. He, go, he takes his body through some rigorous training. Yes. Doesn't eat everything, doesn't go everywhere, don't do everything, exercises, does things that other people may not be doing. He's up early, they're sleeping. And he's doing it to put his body under control. Yes. Why are they doing it? If they NBA, they're trying to win a rank. Uh -huh. NFL, you're trying to win a Super Bowl. Yes, sir. If you're a boxer, you're trying to win a belt. Yes. If you're playing tennis, you're trying to win a title. All of those are corruptible things. But God said every Christian is a 24 hour athlete. Uh huh. And you need to bring your body under subjection to the things you got to do. You got to read. You got to study. You got to pray. You got to turn some things down. That yes, you have a legitimate. Position. This is good. This Go ahead. Good. Fitness. Because when the trial comes, you want to be in shape. Yeah. Uh -huh. When the test comes, you want to be in shape. A boxer trains hard. Because when he hits that ring, training is over. Uh -huh. And if he hasn't built the right conditioning to go the whole 12 rounds, and he might have to go the whole 12 rounds, he won't be able to make it. And God is trying to let us know when you build, realign your character, when you spend time with me, when you become temperate in things and don't let your appetite
appetite and your flesh run amok just because you see it don't mean you got to have it. That's right. Just because you think it don't mean you got to say it. That's right. Just because you feel it don't mean you got to do it. But you bring yourself under control as an athlete brings yourself under control. Why? Because your reward is not a corruptible reward. Your reward is a heavenly reward that you have for eternity. And why is it we will applaud the athlete? Well, we won't become the athlete in God's word. We'll run to the stadium and our favorite football team, our favorite basketball team. Yeah, you need to train more. You need to get on the field more. You need to do this more because you ain't doing it right on the field right now. You need to get out there. But yet still God is telling you, you need to get in my word. You need to train a little harder. You need to pray a little harder. You need to get off of that plate a little time. Turn that down a little bit. You need to get in shape because I'm trying to get you to win the Super Bowl of Heaven, the NFL, the championship of Heaven. I've got a test that's coming your way. And this test Oh, you did a 